All right, welcome to the video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I wanted to uh, post a video on uh, how to black out your logos. Um, this tutorial is specifically for uh, Hollow Sun brand. Uh, it would probably work with other brands. Um, anything where you have an anodized aluminum housing and uh, white logos. I'm pretty sure that these are laser engraved to reveal the aluminum underneath and uh, which gives you that uh, you know that white or raw aluminum look and uh, so how we do it is we basically uh, use this aluminum black uh, it's designed to uh, touch up aluminum areas and uh, kind of give them that black anodized look so works out really well uh, I tried it yesterday and uh, I'll go ahead and, and give credit where credit is due. Uh, I saw a post on Reddit, a guy named Ferris Mulligan uh, posted a picture of his 365 XL with a 507K and he had done his and it looked really nice in my opinion. Uh, I've always been a big fan of the Hollow Sun Optics. Uh, I actually got one of the original 403As, uh, probably one of the first few hundred that were sold in the states all the way back in 2014 um, still have it today still on its original battery actually uh, so yeah like I said I've been a big fan of the uh, optics for a while uh, the only thing I've never liked about them is what I like to call the uh, the billboard branding um, you know a, a good clean looking optic uh, for the most part and then you've got a big glaring white logo on it uh, in general i'm not a fan of huge logos on anything um, especially guns and gear you know in my mind it should have more of a subtle subdued look and so the the big hollow sun branding just kind of made it look cheesy to me a little bit cheap um, other than that you know great optics um, extremely durable great feature set long battery life so no complaints and i've probably got a total of six or eight hollow suns on different rifles and pistols so you know the the logos never kept me from using them however when i saw that post and uh realized that you could pretty effectively get rid of it and get get a more muted more subtle look i said why not so I posted a video, or yeah, a small video, short video on Facebook, along with a picture of this 365, and uh, got mixed reviews. <laughs> I do find it ironic that you can post a picture of your gear and really kind of get people upset on what you're doing to your own stuff. Uh, so it wasn't all positive, but there was enough positive feedback uh, and people asking questions that uh, I decided I'd try to do a little tutorial and, and give it a shot. So uh, after I did the 507K, I also did uh, my 507C. Uh, this is the uh, ACSS Vulcan. And you might be able to see there, it did have some branding there as well, big white letters. So this one didn't turn out quite as clean um, and consistent as the uh, 507K, but still looks really good. and. You know, upon really close inspection, you can you can kind of see some of the unevenness, but overall it looks really clean, um, and you know, almost like a factory finish. Uh, you know, certainly nobody's going to be at the range eyeballing your gear, so um, and really you should only be doing it for yourself, and that, and that's why I did it. I, I just didn't like the white logos, and for me and really kind of cleaned up. Um, just a side note, I tried it on this Tandem Cross logo as well. It did not work, so I'm guessing this is maybe steel, um, but no big deal. I plan on taking this off and Cerakoting it matte black anyways. So here's what it looks like on uh, my 507C X2 Vulcan. And then we'll kind of get these out of the way. And I'm going to be showing you how to do it on this 507C V2, the big button version. Uh, I've always liked these. Uh, 
I don't know why they went away from it. I think it was like a patent deal or something. Um, but anyways, looks cool. Buttons are easier to operate. But it still has the Hollow Sun logo on the uh, right side. And then the model numbers and such on the left side. So we're going to get into the tutorial and kind of show you all how we did this. Uh, using Birchwood Casey Aluminum Black. You'll also need a couple of Q-tips. You probably really only need one or two per optic that you're doing or per logo. Uh, some alcohol to clean. Uh, the instructions on the bottle say denatured alcohol. I think I have some in the garage, but I just grabbed this regular isopropyl alcohol and it worked fine. Uh, one of the final instructions is to rinse it off in cold water. Uh, to avoid rinsing my optic, I just grabbed a paper towel damp paper towel and then a dry paper towel so that's really all you're gonna need and we'll get started so just get a little alcohol on your q-tip just kind of get it good and clean the directions on the aluminum black also say to take steel wool and and kind of uh, rough up the surface. And I didn't do that and I'm not going to. I didn't want to risk, you know, damaging the rest of the finish. So just kind of clean that up. The alcohol will evaporate pretty quickly. Kind of avoid touching it with your hands. So from there, just take the aluminum black. I just dip the Q-tip down and Get it wet with the aluminum black. So it's got like a blue tint to it. And from here, just rub it on. I work it into the logo pretty good. Once you get it worked in there, you let it sit for maybe a minute or two. Uh, if you let it sit too long, you'll start to see it has a reaction and it. it looks like it's starting to bubble up around the edges. I did that on one of my rifle optics and when I wiped everything clean and dry, you could still see, um, it kind of looked like corrosion actually. Um, but. I went back and did the whole process again and they got rid of it. So if you do that to yours, if you leave it sit for a second, like I did, I was doing some 3D printing and got a little distracted and left it on a little longer than I thought and it actually dried on the surface and I think that's what caused the, the issue. Um, so that being said, it may not come out completely even the first time. And uh, what I did on a couple of mine that uh, weren't even after the first go around uh, was I just go through the process two or three times just to kind of get it nice and even so after it's been on there for like I said about a minute or so we'll let it sit for a few more seconds you can already see it starting to uh, have that chemical reaction and darken up the the raw aluminum spots just take your wet paper towel wipe it dry Kind of get all the chemical off of there and take your dry paper towel wipe it off and then as you can see it's already quite a bit darker than it was from the factory but still right there at the top of the u and the n is not quite as dark as some of the other areas so take the q-tip again get it dry and take the dry end some fresh chemical on there do it again pretty simple i don't know that the chemical would affect the glass probably not but i don't really let it get around there anyways just certainly would want to try to keep it out of any electronics or anything like that but just taking the q-tip and rub it on the side seems to do fine i hadn't had to worry about it getting down anywhere 
So we'll let that sit for a second. And then once I get done with this side, I'll cut and do the other side and then come back and show you all the, the finished product. See, it's still being a little stubborn right here. You have to excuse that noise in the background. That's my 3D printer running. So we'll go ahead and wipe that off. Dry it off. And looks like I'll probably need to do it one more time maybe a couple more times the H and the N are starting to darken pretty good uh, all the other letters are still kind of light which is a little ironic because the other logos that I did it was the opposite where the middle of the logo darkened first and it took a couple other attempts to uh, get the outside letters to darken up but you can already see how much darker it is compared to the model number so I'm gonna finish up the rest of the site, give it a couple more attempts, and then I'll come back and show you all the finished product. All right, so here's the finished product. It's my 507C V2, the old style big button model. And as you can see, the model number, serial number on one side, nice and subtle really clean and then the hollow sun logo on the other side and eh, not quite as uniform maybe as the other side and maybe not quite as uniform as the uh 507k that i did but still looks a million times better than the glaring white logo uh, i prefer a, a more subtle subdued look uh, overall you know my cars i usually delete the emblems off of them and um just in general i think it's i like an understated kind of style more uh, so the white logos really kind of stood out so yeah that's it um still a little aluminum black i think it's a couple bucks you can get it at pretty much any gun store or academy or anything like that and uh super easy i did end up having to do the process i think a total of six or seven times on the big logo for whatever reason it was being a little more stubborn than this side and then the um, 507k i don't know if it was actually painted or if it was just maybe the logo was cut a little more shallow but the the reaction the chemical reaction wasn't as uh, drastic on each pass as it was on the 507k and you can see when you're doing it, 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 it almost looks like if you were to put peroxide on the surface, uh, it kind of bubbles up a little bit. And so that's what you can expect when you see that. And if you do see it, don't worry, that's, that's what it's supposed to do. I think that's the process of turning it black. So overall, like I said, really cleaned it up. Uh, it does make the red dot stand out a little more. So that's kind of cool. And, uh, just gives you a cleaner look if that's the kind of thing you're into. So thanks for watching.